ChatGPT5 was released today, so let's go find out how well it can code. So we are on the Franklin A website here, and if you're unaware, I have this AI code test that I do, and we are going to use ChatGPT5 to do these five different code prompts. So let's start off with Angry Birds, and you can see here we have a prompt that we're going to use, and I'm going to use a standard prompt, and I use these for all the different languages, all the different large language model updates that come out. We can actually see code, and we can go through and see a history of all the different code that the different models have given us. And at any point, if you want to see all this for yourself, you just go to franklina.com and you can access exactly what each model has coded. So here's Grok 4 for Angry Birds versus like Gemini 2.5 Pro for Angry Birds. And you can see the difference. But let's find out what ChatGPT 5 can do. Just for ease of access for this test, we are using LM Arena and I'm using side by side with GPT-5. So we're just really looking for the left side code. I just wanna be super transparent in all the different actions I take and how I'm getting the code itself. And for this test, it is a single shot prompt. So it is whatever the code it gives us in one shot. That is the code I will be putting on the Franklin A website. That is the code that you will be seeing live here on this video. And if you enjoy AI content, don't forget to subscribe. I cover AI on a daily basis. So here it goes. We can actually see Gemini Pro is first, but this isn't a Gemini video. I just needed something to compare GPT-5 to. So just picked a model at random. And here is Gemini 2.5 Pro just kind of speeding along saying, hey, we got this, where GPT-5 is still going. It took a little bit of time, but we have our first ever GPT-5 generation on the channel here. We have a notepad test.html. We're going to paste the code here, hit save and refresh. So we can see here, we have a game called Sling Critters, an Angry Bird inspired slingshot puzzle in a single HTML file. Drag the bird back to play, blah, blah, blah. We have level select which is what we want. And now we are playing, we have a restart button. We can go back to the menu, which neither work. We can see birds and pigs, and this is just the warm up level. So it actually works ish. Okay. Hold on. How do I get the pigs? Okay. I thought I hit it the first time. What do I do here? So the game seems a little broken generation. We have a broken game and it's kind of funny because I've yet to see anything that is better than Gemini pro for this specific prompt. And I know there are people in the comments that will say, Hey, your prompt is bad, but I like that I'm using a standard prompt for all these different models. Cause if the model gets substantially smarter, the prompt shouldn't matter as much. I mean, this is the same standard prompt on all the different models that I use going forward. So it's kind of a fair baseline and we can kind of see which one is better, which one is worse. We can refresh the Franklin A website because the new ChatGPT 5 should be on here and here it is. And you can kind of see it now. For whatever reason, I don't have ChatGPT like the other models for Angry Birds, but I do have it for some of my other code tests. So let's try Minecraft next. And you can see here, I have like a good list of different models that I've used on this one. So we can see ChatGPT 4.0, for example, and this is what it created for Minecraft. And we have a loading screen and we can go back and forth, but that's pretty much all there is to it versus some of the other models like Gemini 2.5 Pro, where you actually fall in and you have like a full world that you can add and delete blocks. So let's kind of see what it's able to do. This time the prompt is a little bit longer, a little bit larger. So we're just kind of doing this as fair as possible. Let's hit a new chat here because we don't want any carryover. So we're going to paste in our prompt and we're going to hit submit. So we have our GPT-5 version. We're going to copy our code just like before. We're going to paste it into our notepad, hit save. We're going to come back here. Goodbye, Angry Birds. Hello, Minecraft. So here is our Minecraft version. We can see generating world. We can move around with WSD. We can look around with the mouse, spacebar to jump, and then LMB to break and RMB to place. And we can select different blocks. So you can see this is a substantial upgrade from last versions 
of GPT, and you can see the world kind of generating as we're running around. There's still like this area here, which I'm not gonna run into. Let's just kind of go around. Let's see if more of the world generates as we're walking. And it seems to be actually generating, which is pretty cool. You can see the world like expanding. So this is from a single prompt, which is a lot better than before, like substantially better. The movement is reversed, just so you know, and I, uh, I guess you can break blocks. It's just a little bit funky, but we can kind of go down. Look at this. We can break blocks going down, but we can't break blocks on the side. So that's one thing. And how do we place blocks? Can I just jump in place? Ooh, okay. So we can get ourselves out of the hole that we just dug ourselves into. You can see this was a massive upgrade from last GPT to this one. This actually might be the best version of Minecraft from a single prompt, just because it is like super polished, the world actually generates. Is it still great? No, there's still room for improvement and we'll continue testing this on the channel. Up next, we have Subway Surfers, but with the cars. So this is actually Perplexity Labs that made this one. This is probably the baseline going forward. This is probably the best one that actually looks and is pretty fun. So we are just going to take the prompt, copy it. We're going to come back to El Marina and do the same thing. I'll be back when I have the code. Up next, we have Sonic. So we have our prompt here. We're going to copy it, but I just want to kind of show you the baseline of probably the best one. Uh, this is another one that I never got around to doing a GPT version for, but we will have a baseline for GPT going forward, but you can see this is what Gemini 2.5 Pro was able to do, and we just have this little Sonic game going on. So once again, I'll be back with code. We can now see our Sonic game, and wow, this is a lot better. It feels really good, the momentum. What happens if I hit the red thing? Oh, I hit take damage, and you can actually see the rings on the top left with a timer that's like, hey, this is how long it's going to take you, and there's actual rings, so it is actually Sonic now. We can't end the level. Oh, it says goal reach, so it says, hey, we did it. We reached the goal. It just, the game is over, but we're still able to play. I think, honestly, for a single prompt, this is the, the absolute best version of Sonic we've built to date. Amazing. It is time for the hardest prompt, the hardest game out of the entire batch. We're going to create GTA. So I just want to show you some of the GTAs that have been created here on the channel. So we have Mini Max Agent, and we can see the street lights, the poles. We can have this little guy here moving around. He can't like spin for whatever reason. The camera doesn't work. The cars are a little glitchy, but you can see exactly what the city looks like. We have Grok 4, which was just airing out. We have Perplexity Labs, and this one has like a loading screen that never really loads. It is a very difficult prompt. We have Claude, which aired out. We have Gemini 2.5, Pro, which has this little bean and this one feels really fluid, but again, you can kind of like jump on levels and you can ride in cars, but the cars are a little bit weird, just the way they work. But like I said, this is a very difficult one. So let's see if it can create a GTA inspired game. You want to point out that it is very slow. So for the sake of you guys watching, I'm just kind of going to slice up the video so you guys will be able to see the output much faster. But in terms of like speed, it is substantially slower than Gemini. I can probably generate like two or three of these games before GPT-5 can come back with Gemini. And you guys can be the judge if Gemini is just as good as GPT-5 or if Claude is just as good as GPT-5. From the early benchmarks, GPT-5, in terms of just coding, it seems to be kind of at the level of Claude, but with a larger context window, hopefully cheaper. Overall good, but not as great as Sam Altman made it seem. That is just my first thoughts. Let me know in the comments below, but let's see what it can do with GTA. We waited a fair amount of time just to get something went wrong with this response. Please try again. So that's fun. We'll be back. So our GTA is finally done took a while. So we have a downtown city style and it says a player that can run around with a third person chase cam, moving traffic that loops in the city block, enter and exit vehicles, soft lighting. It tells you how to use it, copy everything below into a file, which we already have done and we have it all set up and ready to go. I just want to point out something I thought it was kind of interesting underneath all of this code. It actually gives a list of stuff that it's like, hey, I know you wanted these features and it says this one here didn't do it, like Gemini didn't do it, but GPT-5 is like, hey, I know you wanted these features, but like 
the collision, for example, the demo skips it altogether because, you know, we don't want to add complexity. And then it says, hey, why don't you have variety of cities and your traffic that you wanted? Well, forget that. And your visuals, well, you can fix that later. And if you want physics, well, for your cars, add that after. So anyway, let's go see what it created. Goodbye that. We have GTA-ish, 3.js, single file, run around a city. All right, what do we have? Wow. So first impressions, <laughs> I am impressed. As always, the like movement is inverted. It's wrong, so I'm like actually holding back right now to go forward. We can click to mice lock. Uh, we can click to mouse lock, which we're doing. We can do WSD to move. We can hit shift to sprint. So you can see we're sprinting. We're going a little faster. So it had like this big grand code for cars. I put it in the menu, but there's not actual any cars. The character looks a little funky and he can't jump. He is a little glitchy. The city doesn't look bad. I think all in all, it's not terrible, but it's not the best. Really enjoy doing these single shot prompt videos to see how these different large language models improve or regress purely based off like a single prompt and saying, hey, make this game. And we have like a baseline to compare. I think it's kind of fun. I think it's kind of cool. Does this mean GPT-5 is like the best at coding or the worst at coding, I have to actually use it a little bit more than like one day and I have to use it for like a large code base and sit down and really play around with it to give you my honest thoughts. But I think in terms of just like vibe coding a quick couple of demos, a quick couple of games, I think it's in line with Gemini. It's in line with Claude. It's not like leaps and bounds ahead the way Sam Altman hyped it up. So is it good? Yes. Is it great? I don't think it's any more great than the other models out there. I guess it all comes down to cost and speed and things like that. And the, the speed is pretty slow, at least through LM Arena. And that can obviously change if you're using the API, if you're using ChatGPT5 directly through their website there's a lot of variables to factor in. So let me know what your thoughts are about GPT-5. I This is just like my first couple of hours with it, honestly. Haven't dove into it too much, just initial thoughts, it's in line. That's what I'm gonna go with. Let me know your thoughts. Don't forget to subscribe if you enjoy AI content. Like the video, it tells the algorithm you enjoy this type of content and you wanna see more of it, especially if you made it this long, consider subscribing. Thanks for watching, I'll see you tomorrow with another AI video. AI tools. to be